The jaw harp and the mouth bow are among the earliest musical instruments. A Chinese drawing from the 4th century BC is believed to be the first record of a musician playing a jaw harp. And cave paintings in southern France from 15,000 BC depict someone playing a mouth bow. Well, they do say the old tunes are the best. The mouth bow is a stick of wood with a single string that the musician plucks or strums whilst altering the vibration generated sound by mouth. The jaw harp is a metal instrument. The musician plucks its flexible tongue to produce a twanging sound, which he then modulates with mouth positions and breathing. This craftsman makes the jaw harp's frame out of a 3mm thick square steel rod. He measures and marks the required length and bend points, and cuts the length with a standard hacksaw. He clamps the rod in a vise, then slips metal pipes over the ends to prevent them from twisting, as he bends them to form the arms of the frame. He aligns the arms, leaving just enough space between them to allow the tongue to vibrate without obstruction. For the instrument to produce quality sound, the arms must be perfectly parallel to each other, their edges in mirror image. He marks the tongue's position in between the arms and files down the metal within the markings. This creates a notch in which the tongue will sit. The tongue is made of spring steel, a type of steel which, when bent, resumes its original shape. Before attaching it, he saws a tiny undercut in each side of the notch. Then he inserts the tongue and hammers the undercut sides to compress them over the tongue and lock it in position. He heats the tip of the tongue and once the metal softens enough to bend, he angles the tip to form what's called the trigger. Then he heats the end of the trigger and bends it into a loop. This is what the musician's finger strikes to make the tongue vibrate. Finally, he files the tongue's edges sharp, a last detail to improve the instrument's sound quality. To make a mouth bow, the first step is to find a stick that's between roughly half a metre and two metres long, not too heavy and ideally with a T-shape at the end. In his workshop, he trims it to the required length and, using a rasp, files the knots flat. He files the top end until it's about five millimetres thick. This forms the mouthpiece, which you hold gently to your lips while plucking the string. The string vibrates the mouthpiece, producing sounds which you alter by changing the shape of your mouth. He drills a hole towards the base of the mouthpiece for the string. Then just below that, files a notch for the bridge that supports the string. Just below the notch, he hammers in a steel nail, called the pin. He drills a 6mm wide hole at the T-shaped end of the stick. This is where he'll insert the tuning peg, which he constructs out of a wood knob and dowel. He makes the string from a length of piano wire. He forms a loop at one end by twisting it with pliers around an awl. He feeds this end through the hole at the base of the mouthpiece. He hooks the loop onto the pin. Then he threads the other end of the string through a hole in the shaft of the tuning peg at the bottom of the stick. He turns it to tighten the string. Just as on a violin or guitar, the taller the string, the higher the note it produces. The final step is to position the bridge under the tenth string. By elevating the string, the bridge prevents it from cutting into the stick. Who would have thought that a piece of wood and a piece of string would be able to deliver a concert piece? Or, for that matter, some old bent steel. Mind you, it's not exactly heavy metal, but let's not harp on about that.